The Patrol Airship Concept Evaluation Trials PACE in 1983 at the former Weeksville Naval Air Station, North Carolina, undertaken by Airship Industries. The PACE trials were a follow-up from the joint evaluation of lighter-than-air aircraft in 1982, conducted by the USA's Coast Guard and Department of Defense. The study undertaken by them was to determine the feasibility of developing an airship to meet the Navy and Coast Guard needs. To facilitate things, the US Navy contracted Airship Industries Limited in the UK, headed by Roger Monk, for lease of an AI SKS 500 airship for evaluation purposes. Considered by them to be the same size as the Goodyear Blimp, but with a payload capacity by weight of plus 40%. Enabled by vectored thrust arrangements to balance serious all-up weight change without load exchange when hovering. After all, airships enable long-endurance patrol with significant loiter capability to remain over an area of interest, proved in both World War I and World War II, but need ways to balance aerostatic lift, buoyancy with weight and or other means, vertical thrust, when there's little aerodynamic lift from airspeed. At the time, Luftships.com's founder, Charles Luffman, was an aspiring aircraft engineer in his early 30s. Employed by Airship Industries in 1981 to help with general design, engineering and structural analysis to enable a type certificate for the SKS 500 Airship Series, awarded 21st of November 1984, believed to be the first for an airship. After completing an urgent task to design and then project manage the development, installation and test of a new better undercarriage needed, he was tasked to facilitate arrangements for the subsequent PACE trials at Weeksville in 1983. This led to similar design, engineering and project management work for SKS 503 modifications, desired for a deployable boat below its gondola, plus means for crew access and boat recovery with the crew on board. The task also included installation of a rescue winch above the gondola's entrance door. The task involved Various modifications of the deployable boat, an Avon Sea Rider, the SKS 503's gondola for new apertures and reinforcements, and design of necessary winch mounting parts. He also interacted with the electrical systems engineer Tony Patterson, production assembly teams and airship crew led by Peter Buckley, who was also the test pilot. Charles project managed the modifications and installations seeing it all through as one of the trial's test engineers with Tony. The boat modifications were undertaken in the UK by Aerospace Construction Limited, ASCON, who also made the winch mounting parts. Their team, led by Mick Patton, were proficient in boat construction and modification and composite structures. Indeed, ASCON, headed by Jeremy Monk, Roger's older brother, was a close partner of Airship Industries, where they worked together on this and many other projects undertaken by Airship Industries. Charles first went to the USA in 1983, staying in hotel accommodation at nearby Elizabeth City, North Carolina, with the ASCON team. The short route from there to Weeksville took him past the US Coast Guard Air Base, whose people assisted the program and acted as observers throughout the trials. The former naval air station near Weeksville, a village in North Carolina surrounded by fields and woods, is sited next to the Pasquotank River, which flows into the Atlantic Ocean just a few miles away, so it was an ideal sparsely populated location for the trials. Indeed, naval air station Weeksville during World War II was an active station with numerous airships housed and deployed from there for coastal patrol duties, which the Coast Guard now serves. The main thing to look out for were snakes, which sometimes were found curled up in quiet places in the vast, dimly lit No. 2 airship hangar, used by Airship Industries for airship assembly, maintenance and so forth. Charles found one in what Americans call the restroom. Waters from the Pasqua tank to the East USA North Carolina coastline are protected by the Outer Banks, a sandy strip of land with dunes that the Wright brothers flew from. This was a great place to go for relaxation and sailing on the calm, warm, shallow inland waters, also fishing 
crabbing and clams, specialities of the region. It all went reasonably well, so the airship was soon off, launched, for a boat deployment test on the Pasquatank River. Photos show scenes snapped from the airship's large and open windows, plus via open apertures in the gondola's floor for crew access to and from the boat, and from the Bifalar winch lines holding it. These lines could be released by crew in the boat using a simple lever. However, this was the first time for such deployment, so unmanned. It was found during deployment that while the lines were short, the boat was stable below the gondola. However, as it descended with the lines becoming longer, it began to wobble, yawing and sway sideways with bigger oscillations. This was bound to happen, but the test was needed to discover limits for safe operation without means of stabilization. It was found to be not so bad as pessimists would think and didn't cause the lines to become twisted, although it would spin if the lines were too long. However, when it entered the water with a splash, water was taken aboard, increasing its weight. It therefore was quickly agreed with the pilot, a little anxious, to just cut it free using the winch line cutters. There were also hand wire cutters aboard, just in case. The test was thus over and the winches needed repair. Then off again for another trial over the Pasquatank, with crew following in the Sea Rider. Mick, a noble chap, volunteered for the test, a simulated rescue recovery operation from the boat to the airship. Apart from remarks by him, a big chap, that he had to keep his arms down to prevent slipping from the strop, the test was successful. The trials demonstrated that airships can be used for such purposes, although refinements of the arrangements were desirable. Such refinements, naturally, would be part of a development program for such airships following either an agreed order for them or further contracts to continue the investigations. Regrettably, the US evaluation didn't lead to further development. Nonetheless, similar and later 1985 trials with the SKS-601 for the French Navy, with a modified Zodiac boat, the Bat boat with deployable fins, and numerous other modifications, also schemed and project managed by Charles Luffman, did lead to successful stable deployment and recovery with crew on board, where Roger with a flight test engineer Mike Cumming were the guinea pigs for the test. Roger in the sky blue wetsuit is seated for, a true leader sadly missed after passing away in 2010. Charles was in a similar Zodiac boat at the time, from which the photo was taken by a colleague on Grafham Water. The US Navy in 1986 subsequently contracted further airship development work via an alliance between Westinghouse and Airship Industries for the later designated Yankee Echo Zulu 2 Alpha. Here is a photo of Charles beside a model of the gondola taken in the foyer of Bond House, former Airship Industries HQ in Chiswick, London, that the draftsman he directed for it made. Unfortunately, none of these projects were followed up to enable service entry, leaving the world devoid of such capability. Why? Airship Industries closed in 1990. However, loveships.com is the place for them. We perhaps will follow up with sequels to this story for the other projects mentioned. See you later at loveships.com